from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, January the 20th, 2017. Just ahead of the inauguration of Donald Trump today, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu extended his best wishes to Trump, tweeting on both his Hebrew and English Twitter accounts, congrats to my friend President Trump, look forward to working closely with you to make the alliance between Israel and USA stronger than ever. Trump was sworn in today as the 45th President of the United States. Last night on the eve of the inauguration, Trump spoke at a VIP reception in his honor in Washington, where he expressed his hopes for a peaceful solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Trump addressed his Jewish son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who is expected to serve as a senior advisor to the president. Trump said to Kushner, if you can't produce peace in the Middle East, nobody can. He said, all my life I've been hearing that's the toughest deal to make, but I have a feeling Jared is going to do a great job. And there were also reports today that the defense establishment in Israel is preparing for possible fallout in the event that President Trump decides to relocate the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Trump has mentioned that possibility, and yesterday, incoming Press Secretary Sean Spicer told reporters that an announcement on the matter was, quote, coming soon. Prime Minister Netanyahu met with the president of Poland this week. Andre Duda and his wife arrived in Jerusalem on Wednesday on an official state visit. That night, Duda addressed a meeting organized by the Israel Council on Foreign Relations, which operates under the auspices of the World Jewish Congress and the Polish Institute of International Affairs, where Duda spoke out against anti-Semitism and also rejected Poland's culpability with regard to the Holocaust. Duda said, I say it loud and clear here and in Poland, we also have painful memories, but it was not we who invaded Poland in 1939, it was not we who planned the Holocaust, and it was not we who built the death camps on our own territory. He noted, though, that there were heroic people, but there were also evil people, and those who behaved in an inhuman way deserve to be condemned. Earlier on Wednesday, the Polish leader met with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas in Bethlehem. Israeli authorities are looking into an incident this morning where four Israelis had to be rescued from a Palestinian village in the West Bank. Three of the Israelis were off-duty IDF soldiers who were said to have entered the village of Kusra and were then surrounded by residents who began throwing rocks at them, prompting one or more of the Israelis to fire shots in the air. The mayor of the village, along with an activist from Rabbis for Human Rights, stepped in to help the four and handed them over to Israeli security forces. An IDF spokesperson said the incident is being investigated, in particular to find out why the Israelis went into the village in the first place. The World Jewish Congress is partnering with the Auschwitz Museum in Poland next week for a special global campaign to raise awareness about the Holocaust ahead of International Holocaust Remembrance Day, which will be commemorated a week from today on Friday, January the 27th. The We Remember campaign asks participants to post their photos to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, along with the hashtag We Remember. The images will be projected on the grounds of the Birkenau death camp next week, leading up to the Day of Remembrance. World Jewish Congress CEO Robert Singer said anti-Semitism is more prevalent today than it has been at any time since World War II, and bigotry and discrimination still rear their ugly heads all around the world. This is why, he said, we all must declare together that we remember. International Holocaust Remembrance Day will also be marked at the United Nations, whose Holocaust and the UN Outreach Program has partnered with the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum to produce a set of 16 posters based on the museum's exhibition, State of Deception, The Power of Nazi Propaganda, which will go on display beginning on Monday and run through the week. Archaeologists from the University of Haifa uncovered a large Roman amphitheater this week. The discovery was made at Susita near the Sea of Galilee in northern Israel. The archaeological team said the theater dated back to the second century and was thought to have been used for religious ceremonies.
And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Friday, January the 20th. At 6 o'clock, live Shabbat services are coming up from New York City's Central Synagogue. At 7.30, a concert by the Yamin Ord Youth Choir. At 8 o'clock, Rabbi Capers Funye speaks at the 92nd Street Y. At 9, it's the film Saga of a Photo. And at 10.30, it's Musica with Oren Barzilai. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 5.30, Rabbi Shlomo Riskin looks at this week's Torah portion. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, January the 20th, 2017. I'm Tisha Bader. Shabbat Shalom.